love boss tube welcome i am jenny this is my channel stitching jenny today is april 27th 2021 and this is episode number four welcome i don't know about you guys but in utah we are getting some beautiful spring weather we were able to go to a local garden uh it's hundreds of acres. It's called Thanksgiving Point and it's it's pretty close to us and we were able to go to their tulip festival. We we typically go most years. We usually have a membership because it is pretty close to us and so we go and it, the flowers were incredible. I will share some of them at the end of the video if you're interested. You can stick around and look at those. Uh, but it was just so fun to walk around with these thousands of tulips everywhere and the the blossoms on the trees it's just been beautiful and so uh it's just been fantastic weather here i hope you all are able to experience that um it's kind of unusual for utah we typically well we have been fluctuating. We typically fluctuate. It goes from really nice to really cold to like not so great. Um, and it's fluctuated a little bit, but not as wide of swings as is typical. So it's been actually really nice. Um, so I had a question from last time. It was Teresa. She asked, do you love your Lowry stand? Do you use it on a couch or chair? So I thought I would share my stitchy spot with you. That's the reason for the slightly different look. I usually sit a few, like a foot over so that I can use both sides of my couch. My husband works from home, so eventually I will be filming in the kitchen, but for now he's working from home and is in the front room, which is connected to the kitchen. So anyway. This is my stitchy spot. I typically am not quite so close to the arm of the couch. I am usually a few inches over so that I have room to move. But for filming purposes, I'm like right next to, the, to it. Um, I have this nice side table that has become my stitchy table. <laughs> um, that was not originally the purpose for it, but it has very quickly become that. Um, I've got my little, um, floss catcher uh, container and my girls were so funny that they buried this frog toy. It's kind of a gummy like toy. They buried it in my floss once and thought it was absolutely hilarious but what they didn't know is that when you rip out stitches people call it frogging and so it's kind of, I loved it so much that he's just kind of stayed in my little container and he stares at me and he, he sits right here um, while I'm stitching. Um, I have this, I want to say it's called a needle palette. I got it on one, two, three stitch. It's a little foam like sponge piece that's in here and then it has papers that you can draw the symbol of um, of your cross stitch threads on a piece that you're working on. So I typically will use this more to store my needles and uh, if I'm working on one project pretty consistently sometimes I'll that has a lot of thread changes I will use this actually as it's intended. But in this I also keep my my scissors these are um, fairly inexpensive. They're like five or six dollars on 123 Stitch. Uh, they are, I think, by Yarn Tree. There's a pink and a purple pair that you can get. I have both, and it has a nice cap, but they're very sharp. They cut so nice. I love them. So that's my go to. I use working copies on my patterns and so I typically will mark them so I've got a color color pencil that I use and then 
occasionally I will use uh, a piece of beeswax and this is actually beeswax from my husband's bees he was pretty excited to go find me some beeswax so um, anyway and that just sits over here and then I typically have a pencil bag I kidnapped this from my daughter because she wasn't using it and I have extra needles like um, of a different size than I typically use a few tools that I don't use super often like a thread puller um, a thread needle threader that I typically only use with uh, like specialty flosses that are fibery um, and some different chopsticks um, and, a, and a different colored pencil just in case I need to mark something else then I have my pencil holder that holds different kinds of pencils, markers, highlighters, a toothbrush. <laughs> hey, this actually will make sense. So um, when I sew on um, Chanel trim on my pillows, I will fluff it with this. And I did read uh, that after you've ripped uh, stitches out that you can use this to kind of rub it on your fabric to kind of close up the holes a little bit as well as get off some of that extra lint so good tip so and i have a ruler um a few just different things i also store my needle miters on it eventually i want to get either an easel to put over that's magnetic or maybe hang it on my wall that's up for discussion yet maybe some debate I don't know. And of course, my tissues. I have a new purchase that I'm really excited about. It's a phone holder. It was in rose gold, which I love. I love rose gold. Um, but I just got it so that I can put it on the arm of my couch, put my phone in it, and watch YouTube videos, Boss Tube, um, a movie, whatever. Um, and it just stores over here behind my light. Uh, this is my hot light. I don't use it super often anymore because I have such bright lights. Um, we replaced our family room lights and we, the LED lights are so much brighter that I actually typically don't use this. But, and then in my drawer I've got a thing of extra magnets, a pencil sharpener, a piece of chocolate if I need it, a little piece of chocolate. Um, Underneath that, there's a little cubby that I store a bag, and in this bag, this is just from Joanne's Fabrics, and inside are a lot of my projects that I'm either currently working on or that are kitted up ready to be stitched, um, and that just kind of stays under there. On the edge, I have extra clips if I would need to clip back some extra fabric um, and that just kind of sits in my little cubby and then sometimes I have extra Q-snaps sitting up against the wall. Sometimes they're in the bag. It depends on how many projects I have in there. Then the biggest piece is my Q or my Lowry stand. So here is my review of a Lowry stand. I have three issues that I don't like about it, but let me tell you about it. So it comes with a metal plate for the base that's probably about like this size. The plate is sturdy, but it doesn't weigh very much. And so especially if you, once you get, if you get like a bigger project on it, it starts to tip or once you put on the long arm, um, like I have. I have a long arm on it, the extra weight will start to tip it. I have corrected that problem by buying a disc weight. I bought a five pound disc weight because it was in January and that's all Walmart had. I think a 10 pound weight would have worked better, but I just kept it in the bag, wrapped it up and, and have it sitting on that plate. I tried putting it under my couch leg, but it's too far forward, so it was uncomfortable to stitch. So it's fixable but it's kind of a complaint that I had. Um, then there is a, a shaft that the long arm, it's like a L shape 
and so the part of it goes into that shaft and there's a pin that goes into a hole and so there are various holes at different heights so you can adjust how high this bar is. Um, I wish there were a few more holes that you could tweak it a little bit more but but there are plenty that I think you can find a happy spot. Um, then, so this is my long arm. You can kind of see how long it is. This couch arm, to give you an idea of the size, it's, it's about six inches. So I thought I would be okay with the short one, but I was stitching like over here and it was super awkward. My shoulders started to hurt, my back started to hurt. So my sister was super sweet. She got me the long arm for Christmas. And it's so much easier. There is a screw down, I don't know if you can see my hands, about here, just down a couple more inches, that allows you to tighten it. So see how I can swing it? That's loosened. And then I can tighten it. And it doesn't shift. So there's that. And I'm getting grease on my hands. So... I should probably wipe that off. But um, then you have the clamp that goes on to the arm. And then there's another like screw that you can tighten so that it doesn't shift forward or up back. Um, I typically put my clamp in the middle of my Q-snap. So then it's not top heavy, so it's not shifting on its own. And then I just kind of leave this so that I can flip it back and forth so I can finish off my threads. I wish the long arm came standard because I don't feel like six inches is unusual. I feel like it's pretty common, if anything, maybe smaller than most couch arms. So I feel like that one would be, should come standard instead of the, the ramp. The normal one. I don't feel like unless you have a chair that you're stitching in that's more like a kitchen chair that has no real width to it, you definitely plan on buying the long arm. Um, so for the clamp, this is my other complaint and partly just because of how I stitch. So this is on my right side and I'm right-handed and I stitch with let me throw this away. Um, I stitch with my right hand under, which over here is fine, and my left hand's on top. I stitch two-handed. Um, but when I would get close to over here, this would get in the way, and it would get, like, my hand would have to twist kind of like this, and it was very uncomfortable. I started getting a lot of pain in my wrist to the point that I was contemplating maybe even selling it. Um, but I found on Facebook that somebody actually left it so that their clamp was on top. Um, and all it does is you unscrew it and it can go in and then you screw it on like that. And so once I switched it, I was fine. So I was able to find a workaround for that. Um, why I didn't think of it sooner, I don't know. Um, but so I, I do love it. I do recommend it with those tweaks. Um, just keep those things in mind that if you're, if you're going to buy it, kind of keep that in mind. Um, but I do, I do love it. It works really well with my Q snaps. Um, I have not yet used it with my scroll frame. That will be in the next few weeks that I'll, I'll be doing that. So anyway, I had to get a few more things for those pieces before I could start it. Um, now on to the stitching. I have a couple of crazy previous finishes and um, I'm putting away my spring. So I have a spring piece to show you. This is called Spring Has Sprung. Kind of show it back a little further. And then when we're up close, this is by Country Cottage Needleworks. Uh, it came out la last year, I believe. 
but I stitched it for my birthday. Actually, I think it was two years ago. Um, this was actually, my piece was shown on their Fan Friday that Country Cottage Needleworks does, along with several other finishes of this piece. I stitched it on 32 count natural raw linen, which I actually really like. The whites actually show up, so I've really enjoyed stitching on this. It's kind of one of my go-to neutrals. Uh, this is in a frame from Hobby Lobby. It's actually in the, um, it's kind of more in the decorative frame section. It's actually has a mat that it's supposed to be for like a baby or an ultrasound or something like that. It has like a small cutout up here and then a longer, like a thing down here. I think it's supposed to go like this, but it works perfectly for this piece. So... I, the only change that I made to it was my white wasn't showing up in this light green color. I think my dye lot was a little bit lighter than the design and so my white just blended into it. So I changed it. I tried a gray bunny first and hated it. So I ripped it out and put in a brown bunny and I actually think it turned out really cute. So there's that one. Hopefully I don't show the camera too much. Um, this is my second piece. This, um, a lot of people are stitching Americana right now. Um, so I thought I would show one of my favorites. I got this plaque um, at Joanne's Fabrics. Um, fell in love with it, thought it would make a great finish, and then went hunting for a pattern to finish on it and um, tried all different, like looking at different sizes and things. This is the piece that I came up with. And this is Bless Our Home by Country Cottage Needleworks. And that's what that looks like up close. Um, these are just some berry twigs that I found at Hobby Lobby. Um, uh, I did a bow out of cross green ribbon and then the most of the colors are Priscilla Blaine's colors I will link the blog post below um, the only change that I made was the green is I switched it to chives yeah gentle arts chives I also changed the dog to look like my dog, my dog the Schnauzer Yorkie mix. So I changed him to look like a dog and I changed the bird to be a robin. Um, partly because we have a lot of robins in our area and partly because my dog hates robins and loves to chase them. Um, probably because he's a small game, like terriers are like small game hunting dogs. So that's probably why but he loves to chase robins. So I made it into a robin and then I changed the wording to be red, white, blue instead of all, it was all supposed to be one color blue, I think, if I remember right. But this one was also shown on Country Cottage Needleworks Instagram and social media. So uh, I was really excited about that. So that's, bless our home. Great job. Hopefully I put it down. Hopefully it's not bouncing my camera. Okay, so then on to uh, finishes. Um, I started, so two weeks ago, right after I posted this, um, Steel City Stitchers posted a post about um, their Moo Cow Sal, and they're using it to stitch the Strawberry Cow from Tiny Modernist. And, I just wasn't super interested in stitching that one, but then they said that anybody could stitch any cow and join the sow. So I have the I'm in the mood for cross stitch piece. So I stitched that. And um, this is by Romy's Creations, and I did make a few tweaks. So it was supposed to be with the Silky Pack that people were using um, for the Expo um, market releases. And this it was her contribution to that cow 
uh, theme. And I just fell in love with this cow. The fact that she has the thread in her mouth, I loved. Um, so I picked similar colors other than the blue of the thread. I love blue. We've talked about this. But I picked out four of my favorite blue threads and um, looked to see which went with the color palette the best. And I went with Classic Color Works Really Tilly. Really Tilly. Yeah. Um, that's the one. And, and used that for the thread because that is one of my very most favorite threads. Um, I used, I believe it's Classic Wor Color Works. Let's see if I wrote it down. I did. So the purple is the Boysenberry Jam. The pink is Pink Posy. Um, the green is Gentle Arts Mistletoe. And then, oh yeah, the gray is the new Bakington color that Classic Color Works just came out with. Um, but I just, I loved it. So I did also tweak that I left off a flower here and moved up cross stitch. It was down a little further and I wanted it this bottom all on one level um, but that's pretty much my changes but I love how my cow turned out and I'm going to finish her as a pillow and put a little bit of um, beads in it so that it will have a little bit of weight at the bottom and I'm gonna stick her over here in my stitchy spot so I'm really excited to get her finished so that's my finish and it was also a start. Um, I kind of, I think I got, so Mania, I don't know how many of you have heard of Mania. Mania is basically in May, how it started was that you stitched um, however many pieces you had a new start for whatever the year was. I think it started in I don't remember 2015 or something and so you stitched 15 pieces I think it was earlier than that it was probably 2010 or something but every um, some people stitch new piece every day but I think I kind of maybe was getting a little excited about it so I started like a lot of new things so I started three three new things um, so here's one of those new starts and it is Faith, this one right here. I've already stitched the hummingbirds, but in the colors of the the words in the this color. But so I'm working on Faith for my daughter. This is by Joan Elliott. This was a new start for my three year stitch anniversary, and this is how far I've gotten. This is using all the called for DMC. I am missing one of my colors. I cannot find it. I have looked in every project. I have looked in my daughter's projects. I cannot find it for the life of me. It's a dark purple. And so that's why the H is not <laughs> finished. Um, otherwise it'd be, you know, at least the word in. Um, there are beads on this one. I stitched it on 28 count Monaco because that's what the previous piece was stitched on and this will be for her 17th birthday and that is in June so I have a little bit of time but I worked on this for several days then I started my tiny modernist every season and so this is I, I just am stitching each season. I'm not stitching the center or these added pieces or the or the frame. So I started on the spring, which is up here. And this is where I'm at. This is stitched on 32 count. Sea Lily Linen by Witch Out. C 
Lucy Lily Linen. And I'm actually really liking the color contrast. I think it's turning out really beautifully. My plan is to finish these as individual pillows. Um, so that was a new start because I was getting excited for spring. And then we had 24 hours of cross stitch this weekend. I was a 24 hour cross stitch marathon failure. So the idea for those that don't know is that in a weekend you're supposed to stitch for 24 hours. I knew I wouldn't get 24 hours in. We've had a lot of projects. I've been working on my daughter's bathrooms. I actually was able to start painting finally. Um, there's been a lot of prep work, way more than I had anticipated. So I finally painted the ceiling on Saturday. I started painting the walls yesterday. Um, we had a lot of family activities going on. So I knew it wasn't going to be super successful, but I was hoping I typically work an hour and a half to two hours on every whip that I have. And I wasn't able to work on every one, but I did work on most of them. So my total time was 13 hours and 22 minutes. So I'm going to essentially give you a whip parade now. So there's the ones that I just showed you. Then I worked on this piece. This is Winter Owl by MP Studia. This is a rushing kit that I got from mybobbin.com and I'm working on the back. This piece I struggle with. I have ripped out this back piece probably enough times that I could have stitched it twice over at least. Every time I stitch it I have to rip something out. And it's really frustrating because it is a kit and comes with the floss. I'm having to un undo the stitches. I can't just like cut them or rip it out like I normally would. I have to actually unlace the stitches. So it's been, I kind of have a mental block against it. And I, my daughter has gotten to the point that she calls it the devil owl because it is such a struggle. But I was excited in the full two hours that I stitched, I did not have to undo anything. Granted, I'm kind of to the point that I'm filling in. So it should be easy, but you know, it's me. So who knows? So this is where I'm at. And I filled in a lot of these lighter kind of brown colors in the in the dips is essentially what I was filling in. Um, it's super cute. I am really excited to eventually get it done. I started with the back because I didn't know if I started with the front if I would ever finish the back. And I can tell you now that had I had as many issues, I would not have started the front like I wouldn't have finished the back at all I would have just stitched the front and called it good um, I think my issue is there's a lot of steps down that are the same lengths and I'm I skip one I think I'm further ahead than I am and so I'm missing a column of stitches and so then I have to go back and fix it so but that is winter owl my MP Studio. Um, this piece I didn't actually get to during 24 hours of cross stitch. I actually started it, uh, worked on it last night. And this is a snowman kiss. And it is on the kit Ada. Um, it says it's 18 count white Ada. Um, this is my very oldest piece. I started it. This was the second piece I ever started and realized dimensions are no joke and I needed to work my way up there. And I had a mental block against it for a long time and finally pulled it out, I think for Mania last year, and really made some good progress and realized, oh, it's not as hard as I 
thought it was now. Um, I'm actually able to, to do it. So this is, I'm trying to see where I'm at. It's kind of hard to see with the big board. So what I worked on is this whole medium pink here in her glove along this edge these three triangles of medium pink at the bottom and a few of these lines right here and then moved up to the medium pink that's up here in what eventually will be like a flower on her hat um, so there's that piece um, my next one is my uh, garden piece and I got some French coaching from one of my viewers. She said I didn't have terrible French but that when there's not an E behind the T you don't say the T. So this is Mon Petit. Jardin Secret by Jardin Privé. So, this is what it looks like. And, let's see, this is where I'm at. Um, hopefully you can see all that because it's a big board so I can't see. Um, what I did was I finished the fence and started these long stems of of the of the flowers. So it's making progress. I'm about two thirds of the way done once I get in these extra leaves. Um, there's really that's only like a third. It's only probably about up to here. So it's getting close. Uh, so there's that one. Then I worked on, this is Sunflower Manor by Hands On Design. And I finished the small piece already, so I just need to finish the large piece. This is Sunflower Manor. This is stitched on 32 count Ocean Kiss. I went with more of a gray. I thought it would be really pretty. Uh, I also I'm not a huge fan of stitching on black, so I went for this one. This is a um, a combined um, pattern by Kathy from Hands On Design and Priscilla Blaine. Priscilla drew the chalkboard and Kathy turned it into a cross stitch. Um, I struggle with this piece and I think what it is is the white. The white is a lot of outlining and a lot of it doesn't, there's no real rhyme or reason to it. Like it, it feels like a lot of like randomness as you're stitching it. And so part of it is I don't know which way to go next, to where to take it. And some of it's like weird counting. It takes a lot of concentration to stitch it. Um, the color part of it is really easy. It's just typical and is really easy to stitch so I have a little bit harder time stitching on this one it's not as fun to me I think is my problem I love it I think it's so pretty but I struggle stitching it but I filled in the pumpkin uh, part of this sunflower and all of this sunflower in my two hours of stitching and this last piece is one that I did not stitch on. You've seen it before, but to complete my whip parade, um, I'm showing it. So it's a 
Country Winter by Plum Street Sampler. And I'm stitching, this is again where you saw it last time. And this is stitched on 40 count um, picture of this plus dwarf linen using all the called for flosses. Uh, so it's so pretty. I really love this piece. But I did not stitch on it. I ran out of time. So that's my whip parade for you all. Um, next I have just two little pieces of haul. I bought, this is 25 count antique white Lugana. And um, you can see kind of the difference as far as the white. So this is white white and it kind of is a warm white. Uh, so there's 25 count antique white linen. And then I bought this Threadworks floss. It's so pretty. I love that variegation in it. This is a 20 yard skein. I got it from 123 Stitch. It was a little over $4 for 20 yards, which is amazing. So my plan for this is to use it for Jesus is his name. This is just a black and white picture. Um, but essentially, Jesus is his name will be in gold. And then the rest will be in this. It's called Mediterranean Blue. Um, it's also number 11383 is, is the color. So the, the rest of the names will be in this color. I'm going to stitch it one over one on this 25 count Lugana. Um, so it'll be more of like an eight by 10 size instead of like a, I think it's supposed to be like an 11 by 16, um, which is way bigger than I want. <laughs> um, so I will start this on Sunday and it will become my Sunday stitching. So I'm really excited about that. My only complaint so far, I was looking at the pattern and she forces you to stitch in the corner to start in the corner. Um, just of how the pattern is and she flat out says that you should start in the corner which I typically like to start in the middle and this piece I wanted to start in the middle because I wanted to start with the gold with Jesus is his name but I'll get there I'll get there and my goal is to stitch one name a week so that's my plan that's also plans um my other plan is today's my wedding anniversary. We've been married 19 years, my husband and I. And so to celebrate, I am going to start Love by Madame Chantilly. And it's all kitted up, all ready to go. So when I'm done with this, I will go ahead and load it into my Q-Snap and get it started. So I'm really excited about that. Um, part of plans for Mania, uh, I mentioned Mania before, I am a pretty monogamous stitcher, and so Mania, like the idea of starting a lot of projects, this is the most projects I've started kind of in a two week period before, and so the idea of starting that many projects all at once gives me anxiety. So. I am going to actually do what um, oh, Stephanie from Lindy Stitches is doing and suggested. I, stri I did it last year as well. It's called Stitch Sania. And her plan idea is that you pick a piece that you want to make a lot of progress on and have that be your main piece. And then if you meet your weekly goal, then on the weekend you get a new start. So. Um, I am tweaking it a little bit because I can't ever do anything exactly by the rules. But what I'm going to do is work on a whip during the week 
and then on the weekend have either a new store or go to one of my newer whips that I uh, want to get back to. So I'm going to show you again the pieces that I've chosen. They are my oldest pieces. So uh, first I will probably work on my garden piece. Um, I forgot to mention this is on 32 count linen that I hand dyed myself to look like a sky. Um, so I think I will do this the first week and probably the fourth week just to get more progress on it. I think I can get it pretty close to being finished. Then I will work on my snowman piece. He is my oldest piece. Um, uh, and then my next oldest piece is my sunflower house manor. So I'll work on that one as well. Um, as far as which pieces I'll start, the only one that I know for sure is I will start Hands-On Designs Memorial Day. It's, it's flags hanging on, on like a clothesline. Um, I will start that Memorial Weekend. Um, but other than that, I haven't 100% committed to anything. I will probably pick something out for my scroll bars just so I can start using them which will be either I have a Sleepy Hollow piece that I need to work on or my witch, my Raven Witch, the witch I've shown you before. So those are kind of my plans. So you'll see kind of more next time as I go. Um, I just want to say thank you to all those who have subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate it. I get really excited when I see I have some new subscribers and comments are all super sweet. A lot of you are very excited about my idea for the uh, buttons to add buttons to all of the every season piece uh, by Tiny Modernist. Um, so I'm really excited to, to do that. Um, but you're all super sweet. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe below. I will also link all of the um, floss tubers that I've mentioned, um, Priscilla and um, Lindy Stitches and um, anybody else that I've mentioned. It'll be linked below as well as a list of my projects will be listed below as well. Um, so thank you for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye.